Hello, book clubbers! We're back! I hope you're dancing. I hope you've been dancing the last couple of weeks. We took a week off, as we are wont to do, between novels, and we're here to start a new novel, The Reaper's Gale. I'm Jeff Kanata. I'm here with Lana Bashinsky. Hi, Lana. Hello. Good morning. I went to go download the book, and I was... I just immediately the excitement of being like, oh yeah, new book, start download. And immediately a quote pulled up. It was like the next brutal uh, uh, <laughs> uh, entry into Stephen Erickson's uh, Malazan Book of the Fallen. And I was like, oh yeah, that's exactly what I'm signing up for. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm here for. Woo! Oh, we got brutal stuff right out the gate. Uh, we're doing three chapters, almost four chapters, because we got the prologue and chapters one through three. Again, huge thanks to the folks that come together and give us our roadmap book to book. Uh, we are so grateful for that. Uh, I finished chapter two last night and I was like, oh, we got we got a third chapter? I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to all this. There's a lot of juicy stuff to work through. So we're not even going to do uh, a, a non-spoiler topic as we usually do because we're worried about getting it all in and we're starting this new novel. Mm -hmm. So hope you're, you're with us. Hope you're reading along. Reaper's Gale starting now. So just jump right into spoilers. Here we go with the prologue, <laughs> starting with uh, some big, bad God Ascendant type stuff mm -hmm. uh, with Kilimandaros. Kilimandaros, the uh, big, hulking, multi jointed, bloody knuckled God thing. The uh, why uh, now I'm immediately going to forget the name of that type of beast. What is that called? What is uh, it called? The multi-jointed friend. Oh, the uh, the fork 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 sail. Yeah, you know uh, we've heard the multi-jointed description a couple times. I think this is like more of a picture than we've ever gotten, or is this one just specific and unique because they're the god well, one? I I. I I'm going to venture to say, I don't know this to be true, but I'm going to venture to say that Kilmandaros, there's a line that Kilmandaros says, maybe not right in this beginning moment, but in this prologue at some point, Kilmandaros says, I have to go deal with my children or something, my children in the mortal realm. And I'm like, is that the fork roll of sale? Is that? It, yes. Yes. This it, is the progenitor of all of the fork roll of sale. I mean, definitely described in like a, uh, like a Venus of Villendorf, like very fertility for Krillisail vibes yes, from the description yes. of this beastie. We also know that Kilmandaros uh, is the one that kills, that punches uh, <laughs> Scabandari right in the face. Mm -hmm. And this is that moment. Uh, pretty much the prologue is kind of about that mm -hmm. because we have, uh, first of all, we have Kilmandaros just kind of like, Walking through dead dragon fields of dead dragons, just happy <laughs> as can be, uh, and then uh, he sort of makes some ob observations about the the state of the this this place, which I think is the uh, Starvald Demerlane mm -hmm. uh, um, Warren, and uh, then Kilmandaros goes to the mortal realm. Yeah, I've we. Got, my impression is that uh, they're walking through this area where. The prologue of, oh gosh, Midnight Tides was the moment that the uh, Scabandari stabbed Silchus, Silchus Ruin. Ruin. Yes, yes. And that was like what calls, caused like the sundering of all of the Shadow Warren, right? Yes. I and think it might so, have been House of Chains prologue, but yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, but yeah, the yeah. Point, point being that I think we're like picking up Right that after left, that, right yes. after that, and like I think there, uh, Kilmandaris is like looking around at all of the like the splitting of the Warrens and the description of like this yes. now sh fractured plane. Yes, a uh, Corral Emerlon. Yes, this, that mm -hmm. that is what it is. It's not Star. 
I said it wrong. It's Corald Emerlon, the Shattered Warren that has been so problematic. People trying to get the pieces and cobble mm -hmm. them back together. Yes, this is that. Absolutely right. And, and I, then we I, cut over. All the dead dragons are like dead to Standy that would become wraiths. Question I don't mark. know if that's true. Uh, but well, I know that the next scene is Gothos like cleaning up after all of the dead. I think the reason, well, the reason they become raised is because of that, uh, the ritual that right. prevents there being a house, a, a death realm, mm. right? Yeah. Which I think is the ritual that they talk about in a second. Yes, you're right. But like yes. this is but these are the the the, the folks who died to, yes. to Yes. And Gothos is literally like cleaning it up. He's like <laughs> he's just like, man, this is a real mess after this whole uh, <laughs> fight versus the Kachane Chamel. And um uh then we see, you know, this kind of meeting of Kilmandaros and Gothos and Mail, mm -hmm. who every time Mail shows up in one of these prologues, I'm like, I have a hard time imagining it as bug. But <laughs> I know, especially because Gothos is like, male, I did what you wanted. I'm like, male wanted that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What uh, a guy. <laughs> they sort of have this um, this debate about, like, do we kill Scabandari? Because Scabandari is, like, all, like, d kind of dying. You yeah. Know, kind of, uh, um, He's got a real Sephiroth vibe, one-winged. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> kind of just sitting there like, what are you going to do with me? And they're like, why don't you kill him, Kilmandaros? He's like, I'll do it. I'll totally do it. Like, and that's like, where I got my name. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, so, uh, but they're like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Like, um, are we going to, uh, you know, the soul will be released if you punch him in the face. And then what? And then it could get even worse. And they're like, ah, I know what I'll do. I'll use this finest. Trap it. Well, Gothos like is a sneaky little boy here. He's like, they're like, Gothos, help us. And he's like, well, then you owe me. Yeah. And then, uh, so Male's like, help us. And he's like, you owe me a fave. And then Kevin is like, well, help me do this. And he's like, well, then you owe me a fave, but I can do it. And then he does it. And he's like, and this is the favor piece. And like, just, he, <laughs> I got he just soul. has, you just got him. He's got yeah. him. He's like, what are you going to do with it? I don't know. I'll figure that out later. Peace out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and by the way, Gothos, if you recall, is Ikarium's father. Papa. Yes. And he's it's just chilling, I guess, in his house that is made out of Scabandari. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the whole thing with Ikarium is like he started all the bad juju around himself because he was like, I'm going to break my dad out. And his dad's like, this is like my best. I'm living my best life. <laughs> I don't even want to be broken out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like in the Zath house, right? It is. But aren't yeah. the Zath houses, well, this is where I could be totally conflating things, made by Finists or just one of mm. the Finists made the first Zath house that we found in Guardians of the Moon? Ooh. I don't know. I don't know the answer <laughs> to that one. I, mean, I didn't either. know there was going to be a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is there is some relationship between the house and the Finist that we've yes. previously seen. And Goth Gothos is in... One of the houses, and now he's yes. a finish that's made out of Scabandari. That's right. That's all we know. That's right. Uh, then Kilmandaros is like, all right, I'm going to go back to Corral de Merlon. And then he, uh, uh, Anamanda Rake is there. Anamandaris Purake, as he's presently referred to. Mm -hmm. And um, Rake is like, hey, Kilmandaros, need my help, buddy? And Kilmandaros is like, I... I, um, I I thought that Osiric was going to try to stop you, was going to try to stop you from killing Scabandari because he wanted to avenge uh, Silch's ruin. And Rick's like, ah, I don't even, I don't even bother because I knew you were going to handle it. Mm -hmm. I was, I didn't even do it because I knew you were going to punch him right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you know what, Silch's being in a Zath house, man, that just sounds like some peace and quiet. That just sounds like real me time, you know, mm -hmm. real mm -hmm. relaxing. Just oh, what I wouldn't give for some Azath house, just a little <laughs> Azath Airbnb. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. <laughs> a little fire in the fireplace and just timeless eternity. Oh, nobody <laughs> bothering you. No cell phones, you know, <laughs> just be laxing. <laughs> 
<laughs> Silk just ruins really one, the one that that won here is what mm -hmm. he's saying. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, <laughs> he is, they are going to expel the pretenders. I don't know what that means exactly. I don't know if you have a theory. <sighs> no. <laughs> but they do, they both do say, let's keep that throne of shadow unoccupied. So everybody yeah. really wants that throne of shadow not to be occupied. The pretenders, I mean, thinking about like, oh, I have to go deal with my children that are on the planet. I'm like, change them, Ali. Just a general pretenders of the whatever. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, I think he, everybody's mad because the Kachin Chamali just decided, like, let's just, cr you know, create oblivion. Let's just yeah. uh, annihilate everything. Mm -hmm. And nobody nobody loves that, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> generally speaking. Yeah. All right. Next scene in the prologue is uh, a new character, uh, Atri Preda Bivat <laughs> of the Dreen. We're new, new places, new people, yeah. new, new, mm -hmm. new stuff, um, and uh, they uh, they walk onto the beach and they see thousands of war canoes. And this, and they're like, like where they, are the people? And this, the is like, uh, I mean, Atri Prada. We've that's Midnight Tides era. That's right. We are full. This, this, I mean, who knows where this novel is going to go, but mm -hmm. at least these three chapters feel like the most direct sequel to Midnight Tides. Yes. You know, we had a whole novel, The Bone Hunters, in between, but this feels like picking up on the Midnight Tides stuff, yeah, which pick I am down for because love that novel. Yeah, it's picking up on it, but the first little section of it was the past because it's right after the, yes. the, the, the stabbage. Right. Um, uh, and then this is like Midnight Tides and like, where'd all these canoes come from? Right. Um, and, and where then, the, more the more more where are the people? Because if there's this many canoes, yes, yeah. each would have carried like a hundred people. There should be half a million folks, people. Yeah. yeah, just wandering S around, strangers in the land. Where did they go? Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Uh, then we have uh, the last scene of the prologue, which is mystery man mm -hmm. walking around finding wolves have eaten bodies, just the hearts. Just the hearts. Mm. I mean, they are the tastiest part. Yeah. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Right, and they're so full of love. Um, <laughs> you can taste the love. You can taste the love. And the, uh, the he's like looking at the armor of the people. It's like unfamiliar yeah. gear. But they've got the two puppy dog heads, which are, are those the two? Those aren't the two dog heads that Carson chopped off. No, those are the no, two I dogs that Fandere are. and. Yeah. The other trog, one, Trog, Treg, Trog, what? Fandere and, <laughs> and Trog. What's his name? Fandere and what's the other one? <laughs> the two doggies. That's yeah, what I think it is. T tog, Tog, just Tog, Tog and yeah. Fandere. I think <laughs> <laughs> flexing my brain so hard. It definitely yeah. was like okay. We took a week off. We can't ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So book one starts. The Emperor in Gold, and I'm like, mm, I know who that is. Uh, <laughs> First scene, the first scene, okay, we're just, we jump right in as uh, Mr. Erickson loves to do. New peoples, new mm. dynamics, mm. new social hierarchies. And again, this is sort of like the fallout of the, the conquering of Lether mm -hmm. by the uh, Tisti Dur at the end of, uh, or in the middle of uh, Midnight Tides. So this is the new normal, the new, uh, you know, the, the new power structure here is that there are these patriotists of which one is the Invigilator. I love that name. It's just <laughs> like, I feel like just reading that, you'd be like, good dude, bad dude. I'd be like, bad dude. Bad dude. You don't call yourself <laughs> the Invigilator unless you're going to, Mess some people up. <laughs> Keros Invictad. Invictad. I I promise you, I went back and watched the last <laughs> five minutes of our interview with Steven Erickson uh -huh. so many times to try to get these names right. He just powers right through them, though. I I'm know. Like, it's hard. <laughs> um, anyway, so... Um, this was a little bewildering to me just because we're like, we're in a new, we're in a new dynamic. I'm not really sure 
who's what and what's what's who. But um, there are clearly, um, you know, there are these, the patriotists feel like real fascists. Oh, yeah. Big time. They're, they're real bad folks. Uh, the group of power that comes into power to help the, you know, in uh, the invading force yeah. keep power, probably not great. Typically. Not great. <laughs> not great. Uh, we do have this uh, delightful moment, though, where uh, Carol, she just loves puzzles. Yeah. He's just a fan of puzzies. Yo, you know? he's a real Rubik's head. Brain teaser. Yeah. Yeah, this mind, never trapped. Never Challenge it. Never trapped. Uh, and they uh, they head over to the prison, as one does, just to check out all the prisoners that came in. <laughs> uh, a whole bunch of new ones. You know, you got to yeah. check out the new prizzies. And um, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, many of them not in a good not in a good shape. Uh, most of them brought in under dubious charges that may mm -hmm. or may not even be a thing. You know, that's just what the way we do things now here yeah. uh, in Leather. Uh, unsurprisingly, lots of scholars, writers, yeah. mm -hmm. learned people, poets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, most of them are going to get drowned, and uh, most of them, you know, it's like, do are they guilty? Are they innocent? Doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Is this where they have the conversation about the guy yelling? I think that's later, but yeah. you can talk about it now if you want. Yeah, I'll wait. Um, so, um, the, and they're talking about you know all the money that they're making at the the inn of the belly up snake, which is what a great name for an inn. I love that mm. the inn of the belly up snake. Oof, that's good. Um. Uh, and then, uh, and then we cut over to another new character, Rautos Hivenar, uh, which is one of the the uh, the another new faction called the Liberty Consign, mm -hmm. Liberty Consign, uh, which is sort of like the it looks like merchants, like a merchant, like guild. a rich guy alliance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, his servant Venet Sathad, who has been indebted to their house for generations. And wasn't um, she? I think that the, sto uh, the story of Venet was that they were like kidnapped, and then they were like, "You want your your kid back? You, you gotta pay up." And instead, they like committed suicide or something. And they're like, "Oh, I guess we just keep this thing." And that's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're we kept you, and you didn't know until you were indebted, and then they were indebted, but then yeah. they stopped, and so you're just that's just where you are for life now. Yeah, real. Real cool. just what nice, a cool nice society. Folks. Yeah, yeah, just great people. <laughs> um, and there's this kind of discussion about all these weird things that they're dredging up from the from the river, mm -hmm. um, the uh, odd tools and strange things that they don't even know what the uses of are. I I, I love this kind of hint of mystery. I, I couldn't. I don't know what that is, but I feel like we're gonna find out more about it. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah. Uh, and we also heard about this uh, this real delightful fella named Letur Anikt, the the Factor. Love the Factor. Love the Factor. Yeah, uh, who seems like a real jerk. And he's not here. They just right. It, uh, uh, I guess we saw like at one point, like one little glimpse in the prologue. Did we? No. Uh, maybe, but yeah, right here at the beginning, we're kind of like getting. Some information about factor. Mm -hmm. Just painting a painting a little picture. Yeah. Um. I hope that uh, eventually Fear Sangar faces off because then you have Fear Factor. Oh my god! <laughs> a, cl a classic, a classic television program. <laughs> um. <laughs> There's also this talk of the saboteur, which I don't know if you did, but I immediately went, it's Tehal, mm -hmm. right? Because the, they're talking about like, oh, it's this sort of financial saboteur. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh I think I, I know who that is. I love it because I like, I know that we're going to hang out with Tehal again in this book. And still, every time people are like hinting at him, it's like, <laughs> my buddy. He's coming. He's going to oh, be it's so here. great. And the, it's, I mean, we're going to get to it real quick, but it's so great when we first have the conversation because 
they're not identified would just have the dialogue. Yes. And I'm like, I know exactly who's talking. I know exactly. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So great. (laughs) It's so great. Uh, Okay. So um, then we have a scene with uh, back to Atropreta Bivat or Bivat. um, And uh, the overseer, Brolhandar. Um, and, uh, they, um, the overseer being a test eater representative. That's right. that's right. Which is very important. Yes. Uh, and they're, they're like basically just kind of taking over this camp, the Aldan, Aldan, mm-hmm. um, brutal, just wiping out of another culture. Uh, and they're like cutting off tattoos and putting them on their shields. Mm-hmm. It's like. Uh, and just scalping people to get the because the the jewelry the in their braids is too tight, so they can't get it out. So they're like, "Oh, just take skin." Yeah. Oof. Oof. Um, and there's a lot of discussion about sort of the the conquest of these peoples, and you know, it's it's so wild. And I I love the 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 complexity of it all with the Lethari like lost, yeah, but they still have power. They still have. They're still like. Even the people that are subjugated can subjugate other people. Yeah. You know? The, and I like this whole, I mean, that was sort of like the the, co- the common thread through these these chapters is like, hey, we lost, but you're with the people who are powerful in this new sort of re- regime that they're yeah. under. The new paradigm. Yeah. And, and like how they have power and the type of power that they have, even all things considered, they have like representatives yes. talking, interfacing with the test eater. And even they are like, yeah, we got conquered, quote right. unquote conquered, but like look at us now. Yeah. And it's like, who's who has conquered? Who truly? Because right. the Yadur have like taken on some of your customs and traditions that are like toxic and horrible. So right. Right. like there's like this, this both ways sort of, transmission of I- of ideas um the or like this the center point ends up being like sort of like the worst of both worlds yes well you know i this is not a one to one comparison but i was immediately reminded of the sort of aftermath of the iraq war where mm-hmm. the us comes in and is like hey we took took out saddam hussein look you're free and then it's like oh all of these other horrible things come into power and and even sort of under our watch or Mm -hmm. you know with (laughs) with us sort of ostensibly in control of that region there's all kinds of terrible power structures beneath that Mm -hmm. and that's it's so it's so true that even it's not like oh we flip a switch and now the letheri are just part of the tisti door and no 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 there's still like these 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 grasps at power and there's still these sort of horrible uh structure of subjugation beneath that and below that and around mm-hmm. that it's yeah it's, i thought it was very it, it rang true to me mm-hmm. big time yeah all right the next scene is, is when i finally was like all right now i'm in love with this book because <laughs> some 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 friends showed up we got, we're checked back in with a, a group I haven't thought about in a minute, but I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's the folks that kind of went riding off into the sunset at the end of Midnight Tides. Uh, Saren Pedak, Fir Sengar, Udnas, Kettle, and Silchus Ruin. They get Silchus out of the Azath house, uh, which is funny because in the prologue, you have, you know, Anamanda Rake being like, oh man, you know, he'll get out someday. But until then, he's really just going to enjoy that solitude <laughs> you know and then you have we we saw him you know w- with kettle's help get out of the uh azath house and then we even have this moment a little bit later where Saren paddock is like you know he was by himself for so long but he really doesn't seem that off <laughs> yeah like if i was like alone for that long i feel like i'd go crazy and it's like <laughs> no he really needed the rest he honestly. was <laughs> he was just loving it just check out you know Sipping my ties. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, I love this group, and the way we find them is rad because you, we don't even know it's them yet. You know, we have this awesome standoff between some sort of unsavory dudes and a mysterious 
white haired guy in the rain and or the mist more mist than rain. Mm -hmm. And he just like takes them out. Mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, the 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 people they had captured sort of fighting back too. And you have this slave like wrapping a chain around one of them and choking them out. And then you realize it's Udnas. <laughs> it's like, and oh. it was still just ruined. It was awesome. <laughs> it was so awesome. It's like, oh, you were, I guess, captured. Uh, yeah. Like, what are you? And they're like, you were supposed to just be like scouting things out. And they're like, well. And then <laughs> even then, like, they're so cavalier, like, we had some horrifying things done to us. <laughs> I know. It's like, it's oh. so awful. Kettle's like, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the thing between his legs got me. And I was like, oh, oh God. Oh, my God. It's so dark. It's like nauseating. But they're like, anyway, get these chains off of us. <laughs> yeah, and like, what do you yeah. do with everybody else? We could kill him. And all the other prisoners are like, uh, no. <laughs> like, just like having a ruckus where they're all talking about what to do with them and throwing them the key so that they can get themselves out and yeah. get out of there. Just the like, guy's like, can you just hand me the key? Can you just hand me the key? I, I, it's I'll right there. Myself. It's right there. We'll get right out of your way. <laughs> yeah. We'll just leave right away. We'll never even say anything about about you guys i don't even know what you look like or who you are or anything <laughs> really bad memory <laughs> totally bad memory yeah I also love i don't know if it was right in this scene but immediately i i forget who it was but didn't somebody look at or saren looked at somebody again and immediately i had like the mm, what you say like <laughs> I'm really? like, oh yeah, she's like, there's like some moment where it's like just a hint of like the fact that she's falling in love with everybody she sees. There's like a little <laughs> touch of it that I'm like, oh yeah, how many people is Saren going to wonder if it's her lifelong, <laughs> is her destiny, yeah. this this book? Well, I also love that, you remember we found out that she has this like innate uh, ability to use Mekra, the Mekros, uh, the, yeah. the, the mind uh, Warren, and this uh, it hasn't really been touched on yet in these chapters, but yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes. Mm -hmm. Another detail I want to point out from this scene that I just found so, uh, uh, powerful and, and, and disturbing, but also really cool mm -hmm. is the, uh, when we see, you know, Silch just like slicing and dicing these, these awful slavers, he, uh, he cuts part of one of them's head off and the guy like picks up the head and is like, Walking around like he's drunk. Oh my gosh. I was just like, what a detail. Yeah. 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 And also something that happens in the scene is like the a couple of the like the slaver dudes like run away and such so is like, You're back. Yeah. <laughs> like just goes and chases him down. It's like Oh, he's like he's like, should we go get those guys? And like, yeah, I'll go get them. Um uh, I'll just uh, veer into a dragon and fly down, <laughs> fly after him and sl slaughter those dudes. Yeah, uh, crazy. Yeah. Uh, but th then we have this this sort of we hop over to Fear's perspective, Fear Sengar, and um, we sort of realize that he's not super comfortable because he still thinks that Silchus is the one that betrayed Scabandari, whereas we, the readers, know. It's the other way around. Well, I think it's not that he – it's like he's consistently trying to convince himself. It's like he's learned the truth. He knows that the, mm. the the women of the tribe have saved this. He went and he saw the skull himself and, like, knows that he's dead. And, like, he has all the information. It, it, but he's, like, really reconciling with that such that he is consistently, like, Can tell me – just tell me one more time. It's just, like, in your own words. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, yeah. Is the vibe that I got, that he's – yeah. He has all the information, but he's in extreme disbelief still. He, like, yeah. cannot reconcile that. And, and Saren thinks that there's an element of him, like, not wanting to not be the leader. He wants to be the leader still and doesn't mm. want – and she's like, dude, the the Tistandi is the leader. Like, sorry. <laughs> it's just going to yeah. happen. That's just what it's going to be. Yeah, you're kidding yourself if you think that that dude who just sliced all these people up and is <laughs> yeah. now flying after the remainder as his dragon form yeah. is not the boss. The guy who turns into a dragon gets to be the leader. That's the yeah. rules. I don't make the rules. <laughs> um, and she also realizes, Saren Pedak, that uh, Rulad is scared of fear. And, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, they're like, why aren't they chasing us more? You know, why are they sort of this sort of half-hearted attempt to chase us down um interesting stuff there as well yeah. uh, also his name, his name is Zardaran. fear so yeah yeah 
All right, so uh, then we uh, hop over to Tanal Yathvanar, who, again, just a real gentleman, Ski- just, just a real <laughs> scholar. This is a, a real skeevy piece of work. Oof, oof. Ugh. This is a dark scene. Uh, he just has a torture room where he rapes and tortures people. Yeah. He's like, it's not like I want to beat people, but I do want to see them get beaten. Uh, yeah. Nasty boy. Nasty. And, you know, she's going to get drowned anyway. Why not, you know, do get whatever mine. I want. Yeah. Awful. Gross. Um, and uh, he uh, he's, he meets up with uh, Keros Invictad. And uh, Rautos Hivenar, and they're like, you gotta, no, 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 you don't understand. That woman you have down in your sex dungeon, you awful piece of garbage, uh, she is actually a noted scholar. You gotta let her go. It's like, let oh, her well, go. There was like some conversation, like somebody came in and was like, hey, people wanna see some of the scholars be <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. And then Karos is like, great point. We are like, there's like, I think they call out that one person in particular. They're like, this person, it's like too much for the people or whatever. I forget what they said. I'm making stuff up. But there, there's some conversation that Karos is like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like being the benevolent leader guy being like, we'll definitely yeah. do that. And then that guy leaves and he's like, you know, that person they were just talking about. So funny. Yeah. You did unspeakable things right. to her last yeah. night. So get, fix, fix it. He's like, c- commands him. He's like, but she was going to be drowned. It's like, well, un, un, <laughs> yeah. d- drown her. What if future. she says <laughs> bad things about me, though? She might, re- <laughs> she might remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, well, then you're going to pay her off. You're going to, you're, you're responsible for that. Um, but yeah, I, you're so right to point out how that scene goes down. It's so awesome. Where he's like, oh, we'll get right on that. And he closes the door. He's like, you <laughs> <laughs> idiot. Yeah. Yeah, and Uh, also it just shows this dude's, like, because there is this, like, vibe when Tanath is just, like, you know, cleaning himself up that he's like, oh, they're going to be drowned anyway. Who's going to know? Yeah. Who's going to know? And it's like, Keros is like, of course I know. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It can't can't be a a victim. Like, this person's not a victim if they were, like, already a victim. Right. I didn't make them a victim. They were already a victim. Yeah. Yeah, Just continued. Uh, Yeah. And so it, it is also, I think, a little flex on Karos. Like, you think I don't know? Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. So good. Uh, next scene, of course, is the one we referenced earlier, which is just a delight where we start with this wonderful banter back and forth, just just n- naked mm. dialogue where you do, it's not attached to any character. But immediately, immediately, <laughs> like, it's like, that's Teho and Bug. Which yeah. Is what a, I love that. And it's like, I just, I, even like the conversation they're having is... It's not just like the banter. It's the specificity of like, well, according to my calculations, things are off. It's like, what calculations are those? Well, the one I asked you to do for me. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> immediately at that point, I'm like, I know who that is. Uh, uh, and they're 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 looking at uh, Esgara, their two headed insect, and uh, you know they have this wonderful moment where you know Tehal is like, you know, he weighs the mu- as much as a drowned cat, and he's like, how do you know how much a drowned cat weighs? He's like, three years ago. In anticipation of this moment, <laughs> I weighed a drowned cat just to be able to make this reference accurately. Uh, so I also good. love how like so much of it, the conversation is woven around, like everything's a little bit tangent to water. Why do you yeah. know what a drowned mm-hmm. cat is like? Well, I am the, I'm the water guy. Yeah. It's like kind of my thing. And I also uh, like how Tay Hall is no longer denying his knowledge that this is a actual God. He, yeah. He's like, he'll say like, Oh, is, is that God stuff? You know, it's like yeah. it's some God stuff. Right. <laughs> it's, it's so good. I, I, it's interesting because my brain, I felt like Mail was like going to do a memory wipe on him or something. And then Tay right. Hall was like, it's fine. Yeah. 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 Well, as, cause he was like, I, I want to maintain the status quo. I want, I want to, <laughs> still be your servant and like i like this dynamic that we got going on and i i don't want it ruined by the fact that you know i'm a god and he's like dude i will still mistreat you it's i was cool. like i have absolutely <laughs> no problem continuing my relationship i will still tell you what to do and kind of 
you jerk. Yeah. Now that I like know what your powers are, it just makes you a more powerful servant to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So back. Oh, that's the end of chapter one. Yes. Back to uh, to start chapter two. We're back with uh, Saren Pedak, Fear Sengar, Silchus Ruin, Udnas Kettle. They are uh, going up this mountain trail. And uh, they see so the remnants of where some of the uh, sky keeps were mm -hmm. were made, the like chunks of rock, and like oh, that, that's the old style, old style sky keep. You could tell because the windows are facing out. Just classic old style sky keep. Oh, I I really my my minor in sky keep architecture <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is really yeah. paying off right now. <laughs> it is. Um, and uh, Wither comes back. They're like, we haven't seen Wither in a while. Hey, Wither! <laughs> there you are. <laughs> uh, and uh, Wither says, um, um, the, uh, the, the Kachane Shamel tried to uh, annihilate all, the, uh, all existence, which is why uh, the, the dragons uh, teamed up against them. And uh, Saren Pedak is like, hey, man, you know, you know what we could... You know what would be nice is if we um, we could all just like hop on the back of of your dragon form, Silches. Wouldn't that be nice? We wouldn't have to walk. We, could we just like? Well, they're hop. like looking at the wall, and it's like sheer, and like the higher it goes, they're like in a mountain, it's gonna get icy. And they're like, "Well, how do we get all of our packs?" And they had like taken the 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 carriage or the caravan thing from like the slaver people, and they're like, "Yeah, oh, they would have. What would they do well with all this stuff? If only we had like a lot more, like just back." And yeah. like a lot more, like just muscle and giant wings, maybe. Yeah, maybe just know. like a like a talon I could sit in, like a gondola. Uh, and still, just <laughs> is like I, the bloodlust is too great. No, I will. I get just, so I'll mad. Eat when you I... immediately. <laughs> you wouldn't like me when I'm dragon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Saren's like that is the lamest excuse. It just feels like she's like, ugh. All right, fine. Okay, uh, coward. Yeah, lazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then they have this other moment where uh, they want to go in through this um, th this cave entrance, and uh, uh, Udnas is like, I'll, "I'll go through there." And he like does this awesome like parkour <laughs> scaling of the cave. It's and funny because like, there's something about Udnas where I'm like. I did not picture him as like a cool parkour dude. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, he's like a little, he's just a little guy. And then he suddenly he's like, do, like scaling the wall and doing ladders. And like, everybody's like, all right. And somebody like throw it on like a rope or something. <laughs> like, we don't have to do that. Well, we'll go that way, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I think it's also this scene, like before he climbs up that they're like, oh, well, aren't we worried at all about the, the wyvil coming back? Yeah. But, you know, the thing that he was possessed by for so long and like the last time we saw him very much possessed by causing like this, this rift fr between him and Roulad. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but apparently that, that dragon thing within him is, is gone. It, is, it has not been back for a month. Yeah. Yep. Um, anyway, so they go in, bunch of uh, bat guano. It's a it's just a delightful little cave. <laughs> it's a real classic cave, you know. Yeah, bats yeah. and their leavings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, then we cut over to back to the Patriotist office, uh, and um, you know more prisoners are screaming. It's just a it's just a really great workplace, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a really it's like an like an open concept. That's right. We don't have we don't have uh, cubicles here. There's no soundproofing. Like if somebody's <laughs> having a rough time, you're gonna know about it. You can sit at any desk. Get and some listen headphones to the, if you don't like the noise. <laughs> the screams of appendageless <laughs> prisoners. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have this uh, this awesome uh, exchange that basically is four pages of my quote. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm like. Uh, uh, <laughs> section over section, I'm like, you want to read this whole scene together? <laughs> it's so good, yeah, we should. Oh man, totally. It's literally so good. every next giant paragraph. It was like it's it's sort of 
like now I'm going to get it wrong. Like painting the picture, it talks about like who has power, the confidence versus yes. versus uh, like questioning, basically, yeah. and like people who people who are sec- secure in their knowledge, people that actually uh, have uncertainty. You know, certainty versus uncertainty, which is it, it's so relevant now, and it 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 really is true that like the uncertain, the like the, our real the people you have to worry about are the ones who are uncertain. Because mm-hmm. they're open to ideas. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. The ones easily manipulated are the ones who are like, this is the only possible right. way. Because they yes. they want, they need that certainty. That's right. I, and I you, like can, don't wanna, you can use it. Yeah. Yeah. I like don't want to say too much about it because I'm like, I know we're just, we're just going to read this. We're just going to read it. Stay tuned to the end of the show. We'll read it. <laughs> Skip ahead if you yeah. really want to know what they say now. Yeah. Uh, and then we have uh, Tanal Yathanar going uh, back to visit his prisoners. And he's like, oh, I gotta let this, gotta let this lady go, and I really don't want to. And oh, and then, but she, th- this is an amazing scene as well, uh. I think, where she is just like not letting him assert power over her, even though he is physically uh, in, in, subjugating her and 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 torturing her. Mm-hmm. She sticks it to him, and I love that she's the scholar, and she's like using her knowledge and and her ability to get inside his his head against him. It's just so expertly illustrated. Immediately able to pinpoint, yeah, this like ultimately like weak person. Yes, and like, what are your fears? What are, what is the thing that's going to get you? And like, with no regard for her own safety, right. In this well, she moment. knows she's she knows she, she doesn't believe for a second you know she he says to her something like well i came down here to let you go i was told to let you go and she's like oh nice try sure that, yeah uh, the attempt to give me hope you know mm-hmm. so that i'll behave and she, she doesn't believe for a second that she's not gonna die and so she's like you know what if i'm gonna die i'm gonna I'm going out swinging that's right and it's so awesome it's so awesome. It's so great. And then I I can't tell even if it's like it seems like something she just like made up, but being like, even in this moment, I'm in your head. You're close enough to me that I can feel. And she just like describes the feeling of fear as, yeah. as though she's actually like within him. Like she's like, even now I'm looking at myself saying these words. You have no idea how like embedded I am, like what this power is I have, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. she's like, I can just tell that you're pathetic, basically. And he, yeah. you know, strikes her and then pouts away well then but, she like, laughs right she's laughing mean, the laughter like he can't handle the laughter the way it's described of her laughing as he's leaving and it's just yeah. like icy daggers or whatever like i forget what the exact description is but so ugh, i was like i yeah. love this woman totally amazing Whew. and i love that ultimately it seems to me i don't we, we don't know yet what the fallout of this will be but it seems like him defying uh, the command to let her go is actually going to get him into trouble. So she is actually harming him by pushing his buttons. Yeah, you know, because he's going to do something that is uh, counter to his own well-being by, you know, like I was going to let you go, but now I'm not. You know, I like, like that well, he's like, well, I, they didn't say let you go immediately. Yeah, I'll let you go when you're when you be in, like a good girl. Basically, yeah. and she's like, yeah. "No, <laughs> also, I don't believe you." <laughs> so good, so good, yeah. Okay, and then we're uh, over to the overseer, Brol Handar, who uh, sort of sitting in his carriage, uh, away from all this, is just like musing on uh, <laughs> capitalism and how uh, you know the 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 new power structure in Leather and Dreen uh, is. Uh, you know, <laughs> new boss, same as the old boss kind of mm-hmm. situation. Isn't he also like musing like, like all these things that were so precious to us, Idur, are now like they're using blood wood to like make bowls. Yeah. And like put like yeah. details on carriages. But yeah. even the fact that he's like having these thoughts and he's like sitting inside a carriage. Yeah. Like take me around, driver. is kind right. of like a funny picture to me. Like. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautifully done. Uh, and then another new character shows up, Orban Truthfinder, who is uh, this another patriotist uh, who comes into the carriage and is like, "Hey, uh, there's a all these consp- it's like a conspiracy theorist, um, <laughs> which is a, awesome and a sweaty a sweater, I guess. Yeah, a real sweaty <laughs> McSweatersons. Um, 
which hey, I can relate to. Same. So let's not let's not same. be too judgy on the sweat. Look, uh, <laughs> same. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but he his big report is hey. We saw that group of people. Remember I told you about the group of people that I think is a real important group of people because one of them is a Tistandee and they're heading south and uh, what, what, what's going on? He's wow. like, oh yeah, they're, all the paths are blocked. We're forcing them to go where we want. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting, especially because he's like, why, why yeah, like get in there. You yeah. don't seem excited. Yeah. Aren't you excited? Yeah, we found him. We got him. And, it's yeah. his brother. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I know that. We know that. Yeah. We have this yeah. information. The emperor's brother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the alarm bells go off and he's like, ah, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the next scene is another new character, another new badass character, mm. Red Mask. Oh. Who's just slaughtering fools with a sick barbed whip. Uh, whip knife. I'm always here for the whip knife. I will say, I was like, is he a tiny dragon? Mm. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, if you looked they, under his thing, you'd see like red scales. And I'm like, yeah. ooh, a little Lizzie boy. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's just a mask. <laughs> it's a mask that he may have made out of a dragon, though. Pretty have, sick. Yeah, may have skinned yeah. a dragon to make the mask. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, the, the description of how he dispatches dudes upon dudes upon dudes with his... Uh, Spiky whip and other, you know, like half moon axe thing. Uh huh. So rad. It's so rad. And it's interesting because it was like very reminiscent of, you know, our other badass Kalam from last book of being like, okay, we're in these alleyways and then there's people. Yeah. Now there's two. Now there's five. Now there's 16. And it's like, we knew how that ended. And mm -hmm. even in this, it's like, okay, there's the two guys. Now there's five at the end of the alley. There's 20 around this corner. And it's like the sense yeah. of like, oh, this is going to be like the same. Yeah. Kind of like, oh, big, big chase fight for this guy we don't know. And instead he's like, no, I just, I slaughtered them. It's just like cut to everybody's dead. <laughs> yeah. I like how, you know, he, he, he takes out a bunch of guys and then way more of them are coming and, and it describes him as like turning and running toward them. Yes. It's that, so rad. So rad. And then yeah. uh, I forget uh, who it is. You'll remind me of the name who's like sort of riding through and being like, what even happened everybody's yeah. dead the horses are dead and like what is this weapon it looks like a like a tentacle or something wrapped around them and like ripped all the flesh off and spirals around oh it's so yeah. cool it's atropreta brivat a uh, bivat bivat who is uh, sort of the atropreta is kind of described basically as like a, a um like a fist or a yeah a, you know, it's like the leader it's of like the military. It's like a high military. fist. So there's yeah. Pretas and then there's Atri Preda. I think Atri Preda is below Preda, though. Oh, well. I think it's the, the other way around. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so uh, or Orban Truthfinder shows up. That's, you know, the payoff from I, – I hear the al alarms. This is him arriving at where the alarms were being called from. And he's like, oh, I guess Red Mask's exile has ended. Bum, bum, bum. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, they, they're like they're like they're looking at the stuff. They're looking at the weapon. They're like it can only mean one thing. Yeah. And so, uh, it's it, interesting that this is like there's just lore about this person that people well, know in the world. I love too that the, literally the next scene is we just find out that lore because yes. uh, Brol Handar is like, oh, I know about Red Mask. He's this the the brother of this girl that was kidnapped when we were taking over the uh, the all. Or owl, I don't know how you pronounce that. A W L. I was saying all, all, uh, and uh, we kidnapped his or the the factor, Mister Factor himself, Latour Annicht, mm -hmm. uh, captured her as a as a means to sort of exert leverage on this entire people, and she just commits suicide. Oh, that was the thing I was thinking of earlier. I mixed yeah. some things up. Sorry. Uh, and uh, yeah, she commits suicide. He's like, oh, we're gonna take the all your horses and land anyway. And so her brother is like, I will become the Red Mask. And I will, it's like, it's a serious Batman. It's, uh, I will Red Mask and I will destroy all of you to avenge my sister. Yeah. And I think, I don't remember where we saw it. I don't know if we skipped a scene or if it's coming and I'm mixing it all up. But I think we saw that the scene where this happened. Uh, it might have been in the prologue where there's like Lecter in it or whatever. And he's like at uh, one of the all mm, so oh, right. camps. Yeah. 
and they they just like slaughter all the people and they're like what in the heck this is uh they, like, they're not even fighting back like where's their warriors we just like wipe them out yeah. instantaneously and he's like whatever get the herds like right. that was the you're like, right that was the, in the prologue yes like one of the first scenes that we saw was them just slaughtering a bunch of people and they're like there's only like 300 people here there's so many of us and then they went and just like took and like the the longest battle was between the dogs um yeah. and so like yeah. the, the dogs are tearing at each other and it was like oh their dogs are actually better than our dogs uh get in there boys and like yeah. having to like go help the puppies tear each other down um and then they and i want to say that the guy who's now the overseer was like there with him standing next to him there's mm. somebody who was with lecter annick when this happened uh whose name i don't remember now Brol um, Hendar, maybe i think it was That's the overseer. Hendar. Uh, maybe. um maybe i could get I'm, I'm so bad at the names obviously so i probably got this wrong but it was definitely lecter annick we saw the scene where he took all yeah. the her no, you're right just... that's exactly i didn't put that together but that is exactly what you're talking what what they're referencing here is that yeah. scene from the prologue yeah um also, there's a, a, a sort of revelation that those cool, that whip and that his cool axe are sort of these legendary weapons yeah. that have been used against a non human enemy. Um, mm -hmm. So he's like using sweet weapons, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and there's this, this notion of the hissing knight. Yes. I don't know what that is yet exactly either. Um, but uh, Red Mask is just on this killing spree. Uh, Lethary riders are chasing after him, and he's uh, he's just uh, slicing and dicing. And then the coolest reveal of all: <laughs> How is he so awesome? He's got Kachin Chamel buddies. He's he's like on this horse riding with knife-handed raptors as his two wingman. Ah, uh, it's so awesome and like so uh, at odds with basically every other experience we've had with the change Molly because he said that he was in the city just like watching people. I also love his reveal of like he's standing in the shadows and everybody's eyes just kind of slide off of him. Yeah. Mm, little magics at play there. Yeah. Love that. Uh, and so he finally like gets out of the city far enough after just destroying everybody in his path. And he finally is like, oh, now I can finally just get a little bit of shut eye because I'm with my two dinosaurs and raptor bu <laughs> dinosaurs. Yes, the dinosaurs buddies. Just that notion. And he's like, I don't even know why they're helping me, but I'm not going to look a <laughs> gift raptor in the mouth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah, exactly. Interesting. Ah, what an interesting so, little relationship. So rad. So rad. Um, all right. So uh, back to Saren Pedak and the gang. Uh, they're uh, traveling deeper into the Blue Rose Mountains. And um, uh, they have this uh, kind of interesting revealing discussion where uh, uh, Unas is like, you know, they're, they're talking about why hasn't Rulad sent everybody after him? And uh, Kettle is like, oh, I know why. why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know what's going on. And they're like, what? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The crippled god is is calling all the shots. Hey, and, uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, that's so, Saren's like, the what? The crippled who now? It's yeah. Like, all the dead people told me. Ugh, you get, catch up. Keep with me here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So good. Uh, um, the crippled god is feeding them information. They have blocked off the place that we where we'll get information because they don't want us to get it yet. So we're not going into the wildlands. They want us to go over here. Yeah. And everybody's like, I guess we are taking that at face value. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Scamandari, or not Scamandari, Silchus. Silchus is like, he says something like, I didn't know that she had that much to say <laughs> yeah, and he's well, like well now i'm gonna listen <laughs> yeah yeah that's what it is <laughs> she's she's like did you know that she knew that and he's like no but i'm gonna pay attention to that I'm, girl i am all ears baby yeah. uh the other thing that she says is that a vast wheel is about to turn and the one who designed designed it is going to it's gonna no no it's gonna reveal the truth to its maker that's an aquarium like, total aquarium right yeah. Mm -hmm, He's the watchmaker, mm -hmm. the timekeeper, the maker of the wheels. Yeah. And we've seen giant wheels that he's made. That's right. Wheels as bridges. 
And Neil says clocks. Revealing the truth is something that needs to happen to him, right? Mm-hmm, so that mm-hmm. feels like she's all up in that, all up in that. Yeah. Um, so then uh, that's the end of chapter two. Chapter three. We need to talk about the epigraph because the epigraph feels like a major scene. I agree. Where uh, Atropreta Bivat like stabs a Kachain Shemail that's dying. Yeah. Stabs him in the head and then all of the, like, they're like, we couldn't hear the sound, but all of our eyes started bleeding. <laughs> right. And the reason it was dying is because it had wounds from a bladed whip and a yes. special axe. Yeah. And I was like, okay, now how does this add up? Because he's like friends with the Kachain Shemail, the well, guy who's wielding it. Well, the guy who's, I think the well, Red Mask, I believe, I mean, he's described as like, I've got these weapons. I don't know right. how old he is. I don't know how like long his uh, uh, ownership of them, his ownership of them, or like how long he's been like banished for, whatever. Mm, but right. he came and he's like, I guess people don't know how to use these anymore. Um, or like he like learned. There's like some implication that he knew how to use them, and other people forgot the knowledge. Mm. And so I don't think he's the only person that knows how to use them. But like his peoples once all did. And so I assumed that that scene was like, it's not. It's not Red Mask who did the killing of the Kachin Shemail. Yes. Was that was what I got. Or I think that's right. I think that's, that's, that's what I assumed too, is that it was the previous owner, but it's interesting that the new owner has Raptor buddies. And like, maybe like, I mean, (laughs) I could just pontificate about like reasons why I don't have any real reasons why other than, uh, did it say like the length of the tail? Is it like a different mm, kind of No, guy? I don't think it mentioned that, but that's that interesting. Like factions within the mm, um, yeah. it, Or just those two might be sort of. He raised them as babies or like um, uh, they're like getting slow revenge. He's like, I don't know why they're here. And it's like, yeah. they could just be waiting for the right moment to be like, and we've delivered to you this guy who <laughs> killed right. us before. Oh, interesting. Maybe. I don't know how smart they are. I think they're extremely smart, right? They they created spaceships, basically. They did, but the the ones with the sword arms do that. I mean, it's they seem like we never harder. talked to one <laughs> with the sword arms, well, right. only the matron. That's true, right? Only the short tails are the are the real smart ones. Maybe yeah. you're right. Hmm, who knows? Interesting. More to come on that for sure. Uh, first actual scene though of chapter three is one of my favorites of this chunk that we read this week. Uh, because it not only fills in a really interesting gap, it picks up immediately after the end of Midnight Tides from the perspective of Nissal, the first concubine. Yes. Oh, what a cool, her sort of remembering. Well, now she's like a concubine for Rulad, which is interesting how it starts where she's like, he's such a little baby boy. Even after we have sex, he's like crying in the corner and muttering and oh, what a little man and, child. And like the assumption, right, when you get to that scene is like, oh, he's claimed another woman. Right. But then it's it, we go through and we see like her sort of journey of being with like the previous king. Yeah. And given Rula- a choice. And Rulat is like, you can keep doing that if you want. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. Uh, and like that's like Rulad's inner learning from like his situation with Mayan. Right. Um, and then just like shows to Nissal that she's like, oh, there's like a heart. <laughs> Not only is there what he looks like, but he's also got a little heart of gold in there. He's a keeper. <laughs> oh, my man. By keeper, I mean my he's man. the emperor. <laughs> <laughs> by keeper, I mean I am kept by him. <laughs> <laughs> but I also love how she has this, you know, this this memory moment, this flashback moment of seeing that climactic end to Midnight Tides with, uh, um, you know, Brees uh, slaughtering, you know, slicing and dicing Roulade on the floor, drinking the poison, the whole thing. Like she sees it from her perspective and what happened right after that and how mm-hmm. Troll comes in after that and we see him get shorn well, we, get yeah commanded we see him get, to be. get uh, um what's the word i'm looking for he, he gets uh, you know the uh, roulade decides to shorn him because um, and, and because of 
interestingly enough, like because Midnight Tides, it was always Troll being like, should we be doing this? I don't know if we should be doing this, but it was actually Fear's abandonment. Right. And like him not stopping him. Yeah. And I don't know if he knew that Troll overtly helped him to to leave, but it yeah. was like the combination of the rage at Udnas, the rage at Fear that Troll actually was like bearing yes. that for, for everyone and not just for the attitude that he had brought the entire book. It's such a cool revelation of how that went down. Yeah. Because Troll is just sort of like speaking truth to power. You know, he's like, oh, are you the emperor or is the sword the emperor? Yeah. Are you, you know, are you, are you really in control of yourself? What are you doing? Think about it. You know what? If you're so in control, set the sword down. Just do it, it. Just put it down. Don't, I don't want it. I don't, yeah. I, I want to break it. Right. But like, I don't even need that. I just need to see you let it go. But Rulad is like, oh, no, no. You want me to set it down so you can grab it. I can see you, you know, coiling to pounce as I set it down. Like his sort of paranoia because what you said, mm. everybody else in his life he feels has betrayed him. He sees only betrayal now. Yes. And I just thought that scene was so beautiful. And the fact that it comes, you know, an entire novel after the moment that leads up to it and even more novels after we know about the shorning. It's just such a, it's a cool way to put that, 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 that story together. Yeah. It's yeah. I agree. It's awesome. Uh, elongated storytelling. It's just really, really <laughs> cool. Um, but I, I just, that scene was great. I love that we get it from Nisal's point of view. Like it's not yeah. from Troll's point of view. It's, it's, she's hiding in the corner and observing it. It's just such a great way to present all that information. Mm -hmm. um, then we, uh, we uh, have this moment where um, Bruthen Trana, Trana na, uh, <laughs> attempts to uh, uh, see the emperor. And, uh, oh, oh, no, before that, we got to mention that Nassal also is like, you know, it's kind of amazing that he has these horrible nightmares. He, he, he dies and come back. He's, he's just this, he's racked with guilt. He's mumbling about his brother in, in his sleep. And then the next morning he like just sees company, you know, he's just like <laughs> seeing people and, and doing like nothing yeah. happened. Then like they're talking about him like as an emperor. It's like, yeah, he could have come in and just been like, I'm the emperor now. Kill them all. But he's like, I'm yeah. the emperor now. What are your grievances? Let's yeah. uh let's hear about really the stories people. of the people. He's yeah. misunderstood. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it was like a rough road to get here, but now that he's here, yeah. He just wants to clean this place up. I like that Nassal kind of and again, it's you know, these novels are always like that where there's two sides. You know, it's not he's not just an evil. Mm -hmm. you know monarch he's 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 there's well, maybe there's some good in there and she said she literally says that like beneath all of that there's there might be a shred of goodness and then what i like like in the next scene where whatever his face is is trying to get in and and see him we yeah. also find out like oh the people like the grievances that come to relot are hand-picked yes. by these other jerks yeah the chancellor yeah yeah tribon Knoll. Oh yeah, yeah. Who like yeah. immediately when Rulad like claimed the throne was like, "I bow to you, Malige." Yeah, yeah. And we also find out that he's not only has Rulad been like taking all comers. We knew that from the Bone Hunters when you know they're like, "We gotta go, we gotta find people to go and try to attack our emperor because he loves that." Mm -hmm. He's all, he also fought all of the horrible creatures that were trapped in the Azath Tower. Mm hmm. And a couple of them murdered him like seven times, you know, before he finally killed them. Uh, and then he just like the knowing that he keeps all their stuff. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And uh, so this Bruthen Trana guy is, you know, is like thinking about all that. And he reaches down into this urn and he pulls out the chalice that had the poison that Bruce Benedict, Benedict uh, drank. And he's like, man, I hope that guy, we, what we need is that guy to come back. Yeah. How can that guy come back? Yeah. And I was like, he can't, right? Well, he got carried away by like a guy. That's true. He doesn't, Who's he said guy? not even his sword was left. It's mm -hmm. the, the, the guardian of the somethings. Yeah. The names, the guardian of the names. Isn't that what he was? Mm-hmm. 
Then we have a really interesting scene because we're from the POV of the errant who's just like, man, <laughs> nothing works anymore. So petulant. <laughs> the scene being like, Ugh, this is so annoying. But like, I'm like a god. Like people have to like listen to me. <laughs> Things should do what I want them to do because like, look at me. <laughs> yeah. He's like, did I make the wrong choice? No. It's no. the children who yeah. are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, all the tiles, uh, Kuru Khan's tiles that we saw him use many times during uh, uh, Midnight Tides stopped working. And the Aaron's like, these are my tiles. <laughs> Why aren't they working? Uh, he thinks it might be because the king, Asgara Diskanar, is dead. Or maybe it was because Kuru Khan is dead. Either way, he's like, man, I really shouldn't have just let those people kill Kuro Khan yeah. like that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, well, maybe I'll have to actually ask help from mail. Interesting. 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 Yeah. They didn't Interesting. seem like they had the most positive relationship. Right. <laughs> Cut to mail slash bug. And <laughs> Tehal and Bug are... Uh, having another delightful banter conversation uh, where they they find this fish and they have this conversation of this gigantic fish and they're having this conversation of like, these are the fish that are so big that we thought they used to mate with galleons, like yeah. a, a ship. He's like, what, really? You actually thought that? What did you think happened? He's like, I don't know. Maybe they had little half fish, half ship babies. <laughs> I also love that this is like the first thing that they've found that seems like actually possibly food. Even though it's <laughs> yeah. like already dead, I'm still like, you know, that's not a shoe. And, or a wax tablet. Like they had in the <laughs> just like, year. yeah, just eating yeah. wax. Um, yeah. I uh, love it, especially because they're like, what is this type of thing? And I forget the name of the fish, but they're like, all right, well. Capybara. Cap yeah, capybara. Yeah. And they're like, well take it away uh, make it for dinner and he's like this is like 15 dinner and he's like sure whatever and like pieces out and then immediately goes on like what a little adventure that tay hall then goes through so I cool almost this is like another thing where i'm like can i just pull this as like my favorite quotes oh, and agree. scenes of every so individual good. little thing and like the, like that rube goldberg of social interactions <laughs> it is it's that you know that guy that got famous for turning a, a red paper clip into like a mansion <laughs> yes he did? yeah that's tay hall in this scene he's like i'm gonna tr keep trading up and trade and trade and trade until i get what i want <laughs> Uh, but we also find out that the Rat Catchers Guild, which played a pretty significant role mm -hmm. in the events of Midnight Tides, has been eliminated. That the, the <laughs> police were like, we're first th first job is going to hunt all those Rat Catchers Guild folks down. And most of them were illusions. <laughs> I loved that. They like went in there like they're, they're trying, to, trying to bust this place up. They like went in like basically swatted the joint and then it's just like a bunch of rats and like magic. And they're like, what in the heck? Just look like total fools. Mm. So good. So just to sort of enumerate yeah, this delightful adventure, he, uh, he goes to the Half Axe Temple of Herbs to get uh, trade a vial of the capybara roe for some fat root, uh, and the woman was like, "This is not this is not the seeds I'm looking for," and he's <laughs> like, mm, "Not nope, can't. Yeah. I don't need to eat any food. Ah, goodbye." <laughs> <laughs> then he goes to Gruel's immeasurable pots, which is pretty awesome. I mean, that sounds. I don't mean to. This sounds uh, almost like a insult, but it, this sounds. The, the, these are very Harry Potter y names, you know. Mm. Like, uh, um, and uh, he trades some capybara spines for a beaker. Then he goes to Beastmonger's Shills Small Animals Shop. <laughs> so absurd! It's just so wonderful. Trades <laughs> uh, fat root and beaker uh, for a, a trip through the trap door. Mm hmm. And uh, goes down into where the rat, the remnants of the Rat Catchers Guild has been hiding out and finds our old friend, Chief Investigator Rucket, who's still ready to get it on with him anytime he wants, you know? She's ready. To, she's down <laughs> to clown, you know? And like the fat root that he collected that 
you know, the beaker and the fat root was because the fat root will make things smaller and the beaker can measure things out to make the tiny animals. But then the warning that he got along the way was like, yes, yeah, it's not just going to make those things smaller. You know what I mean, man? And yeah. like this, they have like their little chat and immediately he's like, I'm not like paranoid, but I'm going to check my business. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, do you want me to help? <laughs> do you yeah. want me to check? He's like, okay. <laughs> I'll allow it. Such a great little scene. Ah, oh, just amazing. Um, all right, then we have uh, just a quick scene with Venet Sethad, and, and they're kind of talking about uh, the fact that the Liberty Consign purchased an inn that has this iconic object that can't be removed in this storage closet. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, well that. We'll circle back to that, I'm sure. A lot of mysterious objects waiting in the yes. wings right now. Yeah. And I kind of don't have a bead on the Liberty Consign and and like all these new factions, like what what they're up to. And I think that's sort of we're slow, slow burning some of that stuff, which is good. Yes. Um, but then the next scene, another old friend, Shirk Alale. Mm-hmm. Who now has uh we know that she went off to be basically a pirate. Uh, undead pirate, but she's got a different pirate ship, a new pirate ship in the interim called the Undying Gratitude, which is a great name for a ship. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, we kind of find out about all the stuff that she's been up to since last we saw her, where basically she parted ways with Iron Bars and Corlos and the Crimson Guard. They dropped dropped them off in Jakuraku. Jakuruku? Jakuruku. Jakuruku. Um, and she's got a new first mate, Scorgan Caban or Cabin. Good old Scorgan. Scorgan, what a cool name! I like mm-hmm. Scorgan. Scorgan's a good one. Uh, and uh, they decide. Well, they find this um, this ship, this Blackwood ship, and they they board it and they find this jar that has basically uh, uh, Coltane's uh, uh, death scene like a little painted on it. Yeah, a little. And they're like, what? But they don't, they have no idea what it is. They're like, mm, right. this seems ominous. Yeah. And the boat itself, they were like looking around being like, uh, is there some another boat somewhere that's going to come attack us? Is there anybody actually on there? But the only thing they can see is that it's riding low in the water. Yeah. But as they get onto it, I guess it's just like slowly sinking. It's not that it's like riding low because it's full of stuff. Yeah. They get on the boat. I think that they're like, oh my gosh, it's sinking. Reach in there and grab something. But I don't know if they like, they called it something that I, I can't remember. They're like, grab that thing, specifically that thing. And they pull it out and it's this the jar with the painting on it. Right? Yeah. Right. Or, or like, and, is it that it was a jar with a painting on it or it had a painting in it? No, I think it was a painting on it. Okay. And then there was like more and they're like, get those. We can sell them. Yeah. They, uh, they, it has a po- this pollen, Cagenza pollen that mm-hmm. prevents blood from thickening. Oh, that's what's in the jar. That's what's in the jars. Yeah. Um, and they also find a bunch of dead bodies. Uh, yes. With their hands and feet spiked to the floor and sliced up. And they realize, oh, somebody was torturing these, these Marood doer for information. Mm-hmm. And they stole all the logs and charts. Yeah. And Shirk is like, well, time to head back to Letharis, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, uh-huh. So she's heading, coming back. So she's going to get back into the mix, which I'm super excited about because love her. Mm-hmm. Lots of old friends. Again, this feels like the most direct sequel to Midnight Tides, right? We got, there's no Bone Hunters yet. I don't know if there's going to be. We don't have any, we, we've kind of like departed from that whole scene of the, you know, the Bone Hunters, the, the Malazan 14th, that all the soldiers. And we're sort of back in Midnight Tides land. And I got to tell you, I am. Down for that. Yeah. I'm so excited to, to check in on Roulade again. So excited on, you know, uh, the, 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 all that dynamic to me. Midnight Tides, I think, I think rated, we both rated as our number one book of the series so far. I think so. The, so. That we're back in that, that area that, is 
that it, scene is, 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 is really exciting. And good. Yeah. I think we like touched on it a couple times in the last book where it's like, oh yeah, there's a lot of like things we could see a direct connection. You know, we saw Feather Witch very briefly. The yeah. people are talking about Rulad. It felt like direct but indirect. And now it's like, no, it's just direct, direct. Um, yeah. I want to like, can't wait to understand, uh, you know, people calling uh, Silchus Ruin the, the White Crow. Yeah. You know that there was physically like a, a white crow in the previous books. Was that really right. him? Is that just what they're calling him because of superstition? Like, what are all these objects? There's like some scene at some point that I think, because this is the end of the chapter, right? Yes. Yeah. Where they're like, some dude's garden had like flooded and like a bunch of stuff washed into yeah. it. And he has like a little house and he's looking at these objects. Yeah. So we don't know what it is. Like, lots of little. Little mysteries. Little mysteries, little mysteries. And correct me if I'm wrong, but Silchus and the gang, like their stated objective at this point, like their their little quest that they're on is they are searching for Scabandari's soul, which is what we saw Gothos leave with in the Finnist, right? Is that, am I wrong about that? Oh, I did not glean the specificity of what, no, you're right. That is what they're looking for. Like at the end of Midnight Tides, they Silchus is like, we got to go find this. We got to go find Scabandari's soul. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Gothos has in the Finnist. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, and, and we are also led to believe in these chapters that the crippled god through Rulad wants them to lead him to the it. And so is letting them go the right direction. What are the chances? Gothos has this soul. Gothos has a child. What are the chances that this finist that he had is actually like Scabandari's soul is merged in a part of Akarium? That's interesting. Ooh, interesting. I didn't think of that. Mm, interesting. I mean, I think it's like, like it also could be like, I mean, he's just chilling in a house somewhere. Like, I don't yeah. who knows, but that's like, uh, there's like uh, some, interesting possible little connections i'm in it man uh it took a minute it like a, the first few scenes of, of, of chapter one i was like ah oh, man i don't know I, I feel I, on, on my footing i don't have my foot but then as soon as we saw our friends again i'm like Ugh, yes loving mm -hmm. it yep agreed all right we got as we mentioned uh, a bunch <laughs> so of so many quotes <laughs> so many quotes too many quotes uh how do you want to do this because we clearly both picked the same exact giant scene we did i also have like a couple random one sentences so do i we may have the same ones of those too <laughs> uh do you want to I, I can read like the first section and you can read the next part of it yeah these are the ones in chapter two right i started with who possesses the greatest threat to the empire me yeah, too All right, so you, you want to start and i can pick up or you, you want to meet yeah i'll start because i have mine split okay. Okay. Like I think the second quote, basically it is what's his face talking. And then yeah. Yathanar being like, I see. And then the, the next section is the one after that. Yes. Okay. I just, it just, I just kept going through the whole. Yeah. <laughs> I would. Right. And then I would like stop. And then I'd be like, Oh, there's more. Oh, there's more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who poses the greatest threat to the empire? Empire Yathanar. Fanatics. Tanal replied after a moment, like that one below. Incorrect. Listen to his words. He is possessed of certainty. He holds to secure a vision of the world, a man with the correct answers, that the prerequisite questions were themselves the correct ones goes without saying. A citizen with certainty, Yathvenar, can be swayed, turned, can be made into a most diligent ally. All one needs to do is find what threatens them the most. Ignite their fear, burn to cinders the foundations of their certainty, and then offer an equally certain alternate way of thinking, of seeing the world. They will reach across, no matter how wide the gulf, and grasp and hold on to you with all of their strength. No, the certain are not our enemies. Presently misguided, as in the case of the man below, but always most vulnerable to fear. Take away the comfort of their convictions, then coax them with seemingly uh, cogent. Cogent. I skipped the page early before I read the word. <laughs> cogent and reasonable convictions of our own making. Their eventual embrace is assured. I see. I, yeah, I see. 
Tanal Yathanar, our greatest enemies are those who are without certainty, the ones with questions, the ones who regard our tidy answers with unquenchable skepticism. Those questions assail us, undermine us, they agitate. Understand, these dangerous citizens understand that nothing is simple. Their stance is the very opposite of naivete. They are humbled by the ambivalence to which they are witness, and they defy our simple, comforting assertions of clarity, of a black and white world. Yathvinar, when you wish to deliver the gravest insult to such a citizen, call them naive. You will leave them incensed, indeed virtually speechless, until you watch their minds backtracking, revealed by a cascade of expressions as they ask themselves, who is it that would call me naive? Well, comes the answer, clearly a person possessing certainty with all the arrogance and pretension that put position entails. A confidence, then, that permits the offhand judgment, the derisive dismissal uttered from a most, most lofty height. And from all this, into your victim's eyes will come the light of recognition. In you, he faces his enemy, his truest enemy, and he will know fear, indeed, terror. You invite the question then, Invigilator. Do you want to keep going? I do. <laughs> Karis and Victad smiled. Do I possess certainty? Or am I in fact plagued by questions, doubts? Do I flounder in the wild currents of complexity? He was silent for a moment. Then he said, I hold to but one certainty. Power shapes the face of the world. In itself, it is neither benign nor malicious. It is simply the tool by which its wielder reshapes all that is around him or herself, reshapes it to suit his or her own comforts. Of course, to express power is to enact tyranny, which can be most subtle and soft or cruel and hard. Implicit in power, political, familial, as you like, is the threat of coercion against all who choose to resist. And know this. If coercion is available, it will be used. He gestured. Listen to that man. He does my work for me. Down in the dungeons, his cellmates hear his ravings, and some among them join in chorus. The guards take note of who, and that is a list of names I peruse daily, for they are the ones who I can win over. The ones who say nothing or turn away. Now that is the list of those who must die. <laughs> so, said Tanal, we let him scream. Yes. The irony is, he truly is naive, although not, of course, as you originally meant. It is his very certainty that reveals his blithe ignorance. It is a further irony that both extremes of the political spectrum reveal a, con a convergence of the means and methods and indeed the very attitudes of the believers. Their ferocity against naysayers the blood they willingly spill for their cause, defending their version of reality. The hatred they reveal for those who voice doubts. Skepticism disguises contempt, after all, and to be held in contempt by one who holds to nothing is to feel the deepest, most cutting wound. And so, we who hold to certainty, Yathvanar, soon find it our mission to root out and annihilate the questioners. And my, the pleasure we derive from that. Dude. <laughs> Come on. Oh my goodness gracious. Again, I, it like ex expertly describes the current political scene. And it's ever thus, right? It's ever yeah. thus. Ugh. Pain. And just... I just, I love that even like within this, it's like, here's these two types of people. One is easy, easily manipulated. The other must die. And it's like, well, which right. one are you? It's like, well, yeah. both of those seem like pretty bad options after I just said it. So <laughs> yeah. how do I yeah. <laughs> come out yeah. on top of my own judgment of the world? Yeah. And it, 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 the flexibility of mind, the, the idea that you can question the dogma, right, is... <laughs> Power, that is, that is the threat. The threat is that you can think critically 
Mm-hmm. And those who can't think critically, those that just accept what is told to them, those are the easily manipulated. Those who are just so certain of their own rightness, their own, you know, it's, ah, it's so relevant. True. Yeah. It's resonant in yeah. the worst ways. <laughs> in the worst ways. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You have another one? I do. I have two little single sentences mm-hmm. that okay. I'll say. Uh, and I don't remember the context for either of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think they were both in – one was from the prologue <laughs> and one was uh, from the epigraph of, of book one. Oh, awesome. But uh, one of them just says – I am cursed to live with my own company. <laughs> so say we all, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to do um, one little moment from that incredible exchange with the scholar and her torturer. Mm. And she says, I refute any notion of relativ- relativism, little man, which you'd know had you bothered reading my notes The structures of a culture do not circumvent nor excuse self-evident injustice or inequity. The status quo is not sacred, not an altar to paint in rivers of blood. Tradition and habit are not sound arguments. Mm. And then he insults her by saying, white crow woman, you are most certainly a lecturer. I liked you better unconscious. Yeah. Just so good. But anyway, very interesting that he used White Crow as a like an expert. Uh, like a curse. Yeah. Like we haven't seen anybody else say that. Right. Yeah, I thought that was very interesting. But I love well. I love I love the notion of just because it is doesn't mean it's sacred. Yeah. Just because it's been that way, you know? Mm-hmm. It doesn't uh, it doesn't exchange injustice just because we've always done it that way. It's just oh man, so true. It's like you ha- yeah. Anyway, again, it's so exactly what's happening in the world right now where people are gripping on to the way it has been and other people are saying, hey, well, but that's just, there's inequity in how it has been. So we have to tear that down. Mm-hmm. And of course the scholar would, would point that out, right? And we yeah. have that at play right now too, where it's like universities are indoctrinating our children. You know, this like, uh, anyway, don't get me yeah. started, but it's beautiful. Yes, I agree. Uh, I, I mean, I have like six more, but I'm only going to, I'm going to say this one and then my one single sentence there. And this one's basically a single sentence. Tyranny has no sense of humor. Too thin skinned, too thoroughly full of its own self-importance. Accordingly, it presents an almost overwhelming temptation. How can I not be excused the occasional mockery? Alas, the patriots lacked, lacked flexibility in such matters. The deadliest weapon against them was derisive laughter, and they knew it. I had that one selected as well. And man, yes. Yep. That's like, I mean, <laughs> not to just always be like, and it's happening right now. But like it's everything right that's now. happening is like the only thing that has like cut through anything is – Yes. Isn't this ridiculous? Yes. We have wanna... to laugh at this because it's it's too absurd and horrible. That's why the, the accusation of couch fucking is yes. so powerful. It, absolutely. Absolutely. That laughter of just like – Because, you know, you, you, you want to find uh, the most dangerous tyrannical people, find those that are humorless. Mm-hmm. I can point at one – orange haired one right now who just, there's no humor. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, and we don't need to get, go there, but man, what a insightful sentence. Yeah. All right. You have another one? Just the last one that I have. Ease your thirst on my sympathy and die parched in the wasteland. (laughs) Ease your thirst on my sympathy and die parched in the wasteland. Come on. I ain't got, I ain't got no sympathy. Buddy. Ooh. I ain't got none. It's a wasteland of sympathy out here. There's none. <laughs> it's none. That is so Ugh. badass. Love ah. it. Book good, baby. Book good.
But good, we're in it. Hey, thanks for being with us. We do want to have more of the non-spoiler topics. Mm -hmm. So please, if you think of something you'd like to hear us talk about, send it in. DLCfeedback at gmail.com is the email address. You can also post on our Discord, which is 5 by 5 dlc on Discord. Uh, or just put it, put it as a comment on the YouTube video. Uh, we'll find it however you want to give it to us. But we'd love to get those topics from you for future episodes. And we're in it now. We're back. Book seven. Reaper's Gale. Let's do it. And let's do one more thing. Let's dance it out. When the world's too dark of a place to be And you need an escape from reality Open up those pages and start crying But you're doing it with your friends, so join the book club. My dear.